All right. <clears throat> We're ready now to move on to the next step. Uh, this pumpkin and this pumpkin have both dried. They're ready to, to go on to the next stage. Make sure yours are dry too before you go on. I want you to consider doing the bottom first and then the sky second. Let the bottom dry rest for about five minutes or so before you paint the sky so that they have less li they're less likely to run together where they meet up. We're going to, um, I don't have a lot of uh, space on the ed outer edges of my pumpkins before the border starts, but there's a little bit there where the, the ground meets up with the sky at the horizon line right about there probably, right there, and then it turns into sky up here and then meets to the ground over here again. We're going to paint the ground right up to, but not into the border. And to get it started, once again, you're doing a wash in the ground first and then in the sky. So with clean water, please make sure your brush is nice and clean first. You can see I've already set up my, my paints. I've got yellow um, for the sky and green for the ground. Uh, remember you're using um, comp uh, colors that contrast with the colors that are already there and still expressive colors. They can, the, the green is going to look a little bit like grass, but um, I wanted to have contrast between them and I, uh, I just decided the green was a good contrast. It's not because it's the color of grass, but it's because it's a good contrasting color that I like, once again, all right? Um, so remember, you wanna make sure you clean your brush out really well. I've got my pigments all set up. Now I'm ready to put water down on my paper. And when you do this, you just wanna let the edge of your brush create the edge of the border, right? You're just painting the paper with water at this point, and you need to go a little bit fast. You don't want to put too much water on the paper that it puddles everywhere, but at the same time, you don't want to um, put too little that it dries out before you start putting the pigment into the water. Remember, this is a, a watercolor wash again, and it can be a flat wash, although I don't recommend it so, since this ground is close to us here and far at the horizon line. So I would do a graded wash. You could also do a, a variegated wash if you wanted to, um, where two colors meet together. And you could even play around with putting colors neck into colors and letting them uh, run into each other and make a third color. I'm not going to demonstrate that, but if you have an idea and you want to try it, feel free. So now I'm, I'm painting right along the contours of the pumpkin, trying to stay on the outer edges of the pumpkin at the contour lines that we created with the pastels, trying not to go over them. And at the same time, I'm trying to be careful not to over brush both the paper and the pastels, especially the pastels, because I can rough them up and I can pick them up um, and not mean to. So I'm going about halfway up from the border to the top, from the bottom to the top, um, to put in place my horizon line. Um, that's a good enough place from the view where I'm looking more downward toward the pumpkins. And I want to make sure that I've got it saturated, whoops, not saturated, but uh, laid down all the way around before I pick up my pigment so I can focus on just applying the pigment into the water. Um, so I want to come right up to about the same place where I stopped on the other side. And I'll be able to better tell once I've got color there whether it's at the same height, which is what you want. Otherwise, it's not going to look like um, the horizon line, or it's going to look a little bit awkward anyway. Um, so one of the ways that you can tell is by tilting your paper and looking for shininess. Like I could see that it wasn't quite at the borderline right there because it wasn't quite that shiny where it needed to go right up to it. All right, so now I tap out my extra water. Remember, it's always a good idea to have a, a clean towel to put off to the side that you can mop up if you need to. Now I'm ready to pick up my pigment. I'm going to put the green down below, so I'm picking up my green. I already uh, made my pot of green here prior, prior to putting water on the paper. It's really important. And I'm going to put it right along the bottom edge of the border, right? I'm painting my border in place again. You don't need tape. You don't need anything to mask it off or to cover it, to protect it, as long as you don't let the water and the watercolor run into the border or you don't brush onto the border. Okay, so this is a wash, right? It's, it's uh, got a lot of water in the pigment already, which isn't the wash. The wash is having water, water on the paper that you apply your pigment to and you let them run. 
I have a little extra water in my pigment just so that it's a lot lighter and more fluid. Um, so now I can brush. I'm holding it up a little bit so it doesn't run down into the border on me, but I want to be careful not to uh, tilt it too much that it runs into my pumpkins. All right, so I'm going to just brush it. Let it run a little bit to where I want it to stop, right? So it goes right to about there, goes right up to the pumpkin's bottom. So you have to put it there sometimes, like the pastel lines that I put to, to show the cast shadows on the ground are keeping the pastel or the watercolor from getting next to the pumpkin. So you have to you have to physically put it there to make it happen. Okay, like that. Um, and once this is dry, um, it'll be a little bit lighter than, than it is, oops, right now. Um, let's see, I went a little bit out of my, my area right there, and I'll show you a trick. I can mop it back up, all right? So a reminder, you can, oops, I cleaned out my brush in my clean water, so I'm going to have to get clean water again before I can paint the sky. Um, so I'm going to clean out my brush and then tap out the extra water from my brush. I'm not dragging it. I'm just tapping it out so that it's dry. And then I can come in and I can mop up a little bit where I went out of my border if it's still wet. Now now's when you get to tilt it and turn it and play with it to make it go where you want it to go, to make it do what you want it to do. You have to be careful of all the edges, right? You don't want to be looking at that end when it's running out of the border at this end. So you have to kind of keep your eyes on everything. Remember, I, I like to curl my paper this way so that I can force it downward and force it upward at the same time. And then I can tilt it back and I can tilt it this way to make it run that way and that way. And I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to, uh, Put any other colors in there. I'm going to just put a little bit higher to match up with the height over there. Um, I'm not going to put any more colors in there, but like I said, I could pick some blue and I could put it in there and see what that does and make it go every which way. One of the things I like to do is at the base of the pumpkins, I like it to be a little darker, deeper, um, and I, a couple ways I can do it. I can take the pure pigment out of the cake and I can just put it where it would be a little bit deeper, darker because it gets less light. Just forcing it to be a little bit darker there, um, not too much. I don't want it to look uh, awkward or un unnatural, even though this is an expressive project. Okay, and they can just kind of run a little bit together as the the colors are um, working out. Now, if you don't like it puddling like it's doing right here, where it's deeper, darker, that's because all the pigment is is being pulled by the water down into a little valley on the paper, right? Because the paper is warping with the the, um, the moisture in the water. Um, it acts like a sponge and expands and because of it's wetter there and drier here, it warps, right? So if I don't like it, I can force it to go out of that area by putting a little bit of a cup on the underneath side like that. And I just want to make sure it doesn't run into my into my nice beautiful border while I'm doing it. But see how it just kind of mellowed that out a lot, right? So that's the, the process for um, for putting the watercolor there. Let this rest for at least five minutes, and then you're going to do the same thing in the sky. So I'll have it all ready. I'll let it dry. I'll have it all ready, and I'll do one final uh, video for you. But look at the nice contrast between all of these colors and that green. I'm going to be using that, uh, that yellow in the sky. Ooh, a bright sunny day. Who knows? See you next.